One of the things that I love about traveling is eating. <laughs> when you travel the world, you get to taste and experience so many wonderful foods. And it teaches you so much about the culture and life there. And we get to eat. I love eating. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about eating and tourism, also known as culinary tourism or food tourism, what it's all about and where are the best places to go if you are as keen on food as I am. If you're new here, my name's Dr. Hayley Sainton and I'm here to teach you all things travel and tourism. So let's start right at the beginning. What exactly do we mean when we use the term culinary tourism? Culinary tourism, also referred to as food tourism, is all about exploring food as a form of tourism. Whether that be eating, cooking, baking, attending a drinks festival, or visiting a farmer's market. All of these come under the concept of culinary tourism. It's something you don't even really need to travel to do. Heading to your nearest big city or even the next town over, specifically to eat at a certain restaurant, take certain food classes, or do anything to do with food really, counts as food tourism. And food tourism has taken a new twist since the COVID pandemic too. When many people chose to cook or eat a variety of different foods from around the world in attempts to bring an element of travel to their own home. Who said you need to physically travel to be a culinary tourist? And this industry is actually pretty big and it's pretty important. Here's why. Food tourism is a vitally important component of the travel and tourism industry as a whole. When booking a trip, people tend to consider a variety of factors and food is high on the list of priorities. The World Food Travel Association says that money spent on food and drink whilst traveling accounts for 15 to 35% of all tourism spending. Culinary tourism is important in that it generates so much money too for the local economies. In addition to this, culinary tourism is also an important branch of tourism in that it can promote local businesses as well as to help shine a light on different cuisines and different types of foods. For so many cultures, their cuisine is a huge part of who they are. Culinary tourism helps to celebrate this by attracting interested tourists who are keen to try something new and share it with the world. In this way, it definitely helps to boost community pride and is a great example of cultural tourism. This type of tourism is also important to tourists. It provides a chance to try new foods and flavours and discover new cultures through their taste buds. Visitors who engage in food tourism come away with new recipes to try, new foods to introduce their friends to and memories that they will always associate with their sense of taste. So whilst eating is a very big part of food tourism, it is not all about eating. And let's take a quick look at what other activities we can do if we are a food tourist or a culinary tourist. Eating and drinking out is of course a big example of food tourism. You can go to restaurants, cafes, bars, pubs, tea shops and so on. These are all examples of culinary tourism. There are food and beverage tours too. You can book onto an organised food and drinks tour when visiting a new city. These are run by guides who will take you to various foodie spots throughout the city, usually small businesses, to try local delicacies. And then there are farmers markets. Visiting a farmers market at the weekend to buy fresh produce is seen as a form of food tourism. There are cooking classes too. This is another activity that you can get involved with on your travels. You can take a cooking class or a baking class. You'll often make, again, a local delicacy, whether that be puriogi in Poland or pasta in Italy. Tasting sessions are great too. There are brewery tours and vineyard visits and other similar excursions too, where you get to take a look at how something is made and then try it for yourself. This is also a form of culinary tourism. So let's answer the question we are all dying to know the answer to. Where do we go to get this food tourism? Where are the best foodie spots in the world? Most cities, major or otherwise, have excellent examples of food tourism. In fact, this goes right down to tiny towns and villages, some of which have incredible restaurants or bars that are real hidden gems. 
However, there are some places that definitely do stand out. One of these is culinary tourism in Bangkok. Thai food is some of the best food around and it's certainly one of my favourites. Bangkok has a lot of restaurants suited to all budgets too. Eating out in Bangkok is a brilliant example of culinary tourism. One of the best things you can do here is try the local street food. Wang Lang Market is one of the most popular places for street food with some fresh food filling the lanes from snacks to full on meals. Silom Soy 20 is another great spot in central Bangkok, perfect for the morning. Looking for somewhere really unique to eat in Bangkok? Head over to Cabbages and Condoms, a themed cafe decorated with, you guessed it, condoms. The restaurants say they were conceptualised in part to promote better understanding and acceptance of family planning, and to generate income to support various development activities of the Population and Community Development Association. Another great place for culinary tourism is Tokyo. It's such a popular city and it's one of the best ways to experience food tourism at its best. One way you can do this is to book onto a food tour. Tokyo Retro Bites is a really great one, giving you a feel of old style Tokyo at the quaint Yanaka Market. This is a walking tour which includes drinks and five snacks last two hours. It's a great chance to have lunch somewhere a little bit different. And then there is culinary tourism in Honolulu. This beautiful Hawaiian city has so many fun places to eat and drink whilst you are visiting. One of the best things to do in terms of culinary tourism is to eat somewhere you wouldn't be able to eat at home and try new flavours or dishes too. Honolulu is the perfect place to do this. Some interesting eateries include the Lava Tube based in Waikiki. It's a 60s quiche style bar offering piñatas served in giant pineapples, $5 Mai Tais, delicious food and plenty of fun decor. Then there's Susie Wong's Hideaway. It's described as a dive bar with class and is a great bar to visit if you want to watch sports games. There's also MW Restaurant. It's really famous and creative place to eat in Honolulu. The mochi crusted Kona Kanpachi comes highly recommended and helps shoot the chef Wade Ueka to fame. And what about culinary tourism in Durban? Hailed as the world's best food city, a list of places for food tourists to visit has to include Durban in South Africa. Bunny chow is a local delicacy that you cannot miss while visiting Durban. It's now available elsewhere, but the original is usually the best, so be sure to try some while you are in the city. This dish is half a loaf of bread, hollowed out and filled with curry. It is delicious. And that brings us on to culinary tourism in New Orleans. As one of the culinary capitals of the US, New Orleans is incredibly popular with foodies. The city is a hotspot for food tourism, thanks to the various cultural roots here, Cajun, Creole and French. There is a whole range of tastes that you can try. You could spend your time here just eating and still not scratch the surface when it comes to the amazing restaurants, cafes and eateries in NOLA. Some foods you have to try include po'boys, the fried shrimp generally, but sometimes beef or other seafood, served on a fresh crusty roll. Gumbo. This is a stew, again usually containing seafood, alongside bell peppers, onion and celery. Then there's crawfish atoufi, a French crawfish stew served over rice. Mole filetta, a Sicilian American sandwich served on a specific type of bread. And you can also do a hunted pub crawl in Nola. Would you do it? Another great place to go for culinary tourism is Istanbul. Being split across two continents, it's no surprise that Istanbul is a city that has a huge range of delicious food related activities. From kebabs sold on the street to five star restaurants serving the finest hummus, Istanbul is a fantastic destination for food tourism. Book onto the Two Markets Two Continents tour and you'll visit two markets, as the name suggests, on the two continents. The tour includes a Bosphorus ferry crossing between the two districts of Karakoy in Europe and Kadikoy in Asia. You'll enjoy breakfast, tea and coffee, meze dessert and so much more. And then there is culinary tourism in Paris. The city of love and the city of bakeries. Fresh baguettes, simple croissants, delicious eclairs, the list goes on. 
There are so many of them dotted around. Whether you want something to grab and snack on while you head to the Eiffel Tower, or if you want a sit-down brunch, you'll find one that suits you perfectly in Paris. And that's not all. Paris, also famous for its snails, soups and frog's legs, has so many fine dining options. You'll be spoilt for choice in terms of Michelin star restaurants, Bouterie, Aspic, 114 Folberg, and so many more. If you have the cash to splash out, fine dining in Paris is a brilliant culinary tourism activity. And what about culinary tourism in Marrakesh? Moroccan food is delicious and you can try making it yourself during a cooking class in Marrakesh. Visit a traditional souk and try your hand at some tasty recipes. You never know, you might have a hidden talent. Some tours even include shopping for ingredients, so you can visit a traditional market too. These are a sensory dream with so many smells, colours, sights and sounds. Culinary tourism in Mumbai is a special experience as well. India is another country where street food is king. Mumbai has plenty to offer and one culinary tourism activity that you can do is to spend an afternoon trying as many dishes as possible while simply wandering through the city. If you've never tried a vada pav before, this is the place to do so. It's essentially deep fried mashed potato in a bun with various chutneys and it's exquisite. Many people are surprised to learn that the favourite British dish of chicken tikka masala is not actually commonly found in India. But fear not, there are many other dishes that are just as good, if not better. Culinary tourism in Miami. Miami is known for its food and Cuban food is a big deal here. Take a traditional Cuban cooking class or head to one of the many Cuban restaurants here. There's something for every budget and your taste buds will certainly thank you. It's close to Key West too, which is a wonderful place for a day or two. The big on seafood here and walking tours which incorporate seafood are high on the list of recommended things to do in beautiful Key West. Culinary tourism in Rio de Janeiro. You cannot go to Rio and not try Cajaca. This is Brazilian candy made from sugar canes and it's a big deal over here. Culinary tourism isn't limited to food, it includes drinks too, so head to one of Rio's many bars and try a Caprina. You can even book an organised pub crawl, which includes free shots and drinks around the city. This is perfect if you want to explore at night, knowing you'll be safe and always have transport on hand. And last but not least, we have culinary tourism in Beijing. Peking duck is the highlight of Beijing food. Guangzhou is world famous for its Peking duck and it's not too expensive either. There are branches worldwide now though and much of culinary tourism is about experiencing something you won't be able to elsewhere. Speak to the locals when you're there and ask where their favourite place to eat Peking duck is. That way you'll know you're supporting a great local business because as I mentioned food tourism is a great way to boost the local economy. I don't know about you but I am feeling really hungry <laughs> after talking about all that food. What is your favourite food tourism? What is your favourite destination for food? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, I've got some more here that you will love too.